Hello and welcome to Business Matters, the show about people behind businesses that help make Tacoma a great place to live and work. I'm your host, Mike Work, and today on Business Spotlight, it's time to get physical with the Proctor business specializing in health and fitness. On District Focus, South Tacoma is our featured business district, serving customers with a wide range of stores and services. And Andrew Fry helps you develop a small business marketing plan on Tacoma Means Business. And today my guest is Sean Tibbetts, owner of Tibbetts at Fern Hill. Welcome, Sean. Hey, thank you, Mike. Your restaurant has been making a great splash. It's just taken off. Uh, so tell us, tell us about your restaurant and what makes it unique. Well, my restaurant makes it unique is it's in uh, the historic Fern Hill District where nobody seems to know where that's at all the <laughs> time. So it's like, where are you at? Where are you at? And I'm like, it's in Fern Hill. <laughs> uh, and I'm, the only thing I can say is 84th and Park and right. trying to give directions. And it's been there a long time. South end of Tacoma. It's been there since the 1800s that place right. has been built, you know, and uh, it's pretty cool too. So uh, it has some character. It does, you know, and it's, uh, it's awesome. You know, it's like the red paint when you go on the concrete. That's been mm -hmm. there forever. That's really cool. You know, they don't like pressure wash because you'll take that red paint <laughs> off and it's like, uh, It's no. all historic. Yeah. So but once great. you get through that uh, red paint and in through the doors of the historic mm -hmm. building, there's some amazing food I've been hearing a lot about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of neat to uh, follow your dream and your passion of uh, just cooking and uh, being you, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they want to see what they can do with what somebody else is doing where right. I can just do what I want to do. and. You know, with the flavor profile and uh, the mm -hmm. plating, um, it's pretty pretty neat to uh, flavor that. profile. Yeah, that's a great term. And, and and first of all, it's a small place. Mm -hmm. Seats about twenty three. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of uh, character and friendliness, and you cook everything. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the flavor palette. Well, the flavor palette is layering. So it's like when you're building something, you want to make sure that. Uh, when you're adding your ingredients, you add them at the right time mm -hmm. and you cook them to the right moment. I mean, I can't really explain that. I can show you, but, um, and then it's after that, it's just, it's after that, it's just, it just goes. And all the flavors caramelize and come together um, from baking to my two burners that I have because I don't have a kitchen in there. You know, I got these two little beautiful burners that I beat up so bad in the last You're six kidding. Months. No, and it's fun, you know. And, and everyone's raving about the food. Yeah. So it's it's that's how you do it. Yeah, and I just come out to the dining room and I say hi and see their smiles and yeah. I, I listen. Um, I know they don't know I'm listening, but I hear their comments like, oh my goodness, and it's just yeah. like, wow, really? And I was like, I just made that, that is so neat. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And it's just neat to see people just, uh, just a reaction on that. So describe a few of uh, some of your really, I know they're all popular, but mm -hmm. describe some of your dishes. Okay, so when I first started, um, I was thinking about what to create, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I did lunch, I did uh, some uh, quiche. The quiche okay. sold really well. I did a smoked salmon and I did a uh, chicken marsala. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yum. You know, so something a little different than what everybody else does. And when I opened, my vision was to do a lunch house and cater to uh, to women because I know women love to go out to eat lunch more than men. But then my friends started getting mad at me because they couldn't come eat there because they didn't want to eat rabbit food, <laughs> is what they said. Yeah. So my next meeting, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to launch breakfast. So what I did is I thought of everything I can do possibly for breakfast. And I was like, men love gravy. I'm using these bread bowls already, so I'm going to make a meat and gravy bomb. Mm. So, and that is scrambled eggs, hash brown casserole, cheese, um, candied bacon, mm. and my sausage gravy from scratch every day, and it sells out every day. Wow. Um, and it just took off. You know, same people with, have that for lunch as people well. People have that for lunch, yeah. you know, and uh, same with my clam chowder. I serve that with a roasted ear of corn, Ooh. you know, in a bread, toasted bread bowl, and that took off too. So it's nice to have a couple signature dishes and mm -hmm. people just, the chowder, the gravy meat bomb, you know, and now I'm introducing some new things. And now the the feedback I'm getting on that is pretty awesome too. So what are what are some of those? Uh, I just did a dinner bomb now. So that is a chicken Alfredo mm -hmm. in in a bread bowl, and it's just it's fantastic. It just it looks good, it tastes good, and um, I'm selling a lot of those. Um, I just launched steak and oh great. Um, How do you prepare that? Uh, that's pan seared, um, pan seared oven, and then uh, I just cook to their temperature and I serve it uh, black and blue. So it's a uh, Cajun pepper oh. uh, in the oven, gorgonzola cream, mm -hmm. uh, root mash. And really good. So that sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. You have some sandwiches too, don't you? Yeah, I had a yeah, I had a club that I launched. I had a couple pasties. Mm -hmm. um, now I have my chicken cordon brie. It's my version of a chicken cordon bleu. So what that is is a thick slice ham, a thick slice brie, a roasted chicken, um, some pepper jack cheese for just a little bit of bite, and a puff pastry. And I bake that off and I serve that with a honey Dijon cream. Oh. Uh, you know, the, uh, talking to someone like you who has such a fabulous restaurant always makes me really hungry. Okay. So, uh, so that's 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 just great. Now, you locally source all of your mm -hmm. your food, right? Yes. Talk to me about that. How uh, that works? So, Northern Fish is my fish provider. I know okay. it's not Seattle, it's not anywhere there, but they get the freshest fish. 
Okay. So anytime I, I launch crab or, you know, I've got oysters mm -hmm. or anything like that, it's always northern fish. Which is right down on Russell Which is Way. right down. No, it's right down on 56. Oh, 56, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a wholesale plant there, which is really convenient for ah, me. Ah, yeah, I'll say. Um, my meats come from Blue Max, mm -hmm. um, from my bacon to my sausage, all that. I get them from them, and they're on Canyon. Mm -hmm. And then I locally source through Adam's Mushrooms, my mushrooms. And he uh, forages them, and they come from the Olymp Olympic Peninsula. No kidding. Yeah, and I show the whole dining room. When Adam comes in with that box of mushrooms, every Wednesday I make him go out in the dining room, and he looks at me like, <laughs> And I'm just like, come on, Adam, just go out there and show him. And then he goes and talks about it, tells him the different styles, and people are just like, wow. Wow. And I, I do that. So I, I, you know, I get a flat of mushrooms, and I just come out in the dining room every time they come in, and people just love it. And then your greens. Yeah, the greens, I, I go to uh, the local farms. I just had Franklin Pierce um, Farms um, reach out to me. Is the school district? School district. Mm -hmm. They came in and had uh, breakfast because they tried to come in last week, these folks, but they, I was too packed, so mm -hmm. they came in. Yeah, this reservations week. recommended, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's kind of neat to have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, hey, if you, we want you to come to our farm. Mm -hmm. We want our product in your restaurant. They have a farm that students mm -hmm. uh, work in. Yes, sir. So you'd, you'd uh, be supporting the students yes, and sir. having this really fresh food. Uh -huh. And they want me to come out there and talk to the students, tell them uh, how did I do this, you know, why, why, why am I doing this, and just talk to them about goals in life and if this is what they want to do or... You know, it's it's fun to just give back to kids and, you know, just watch it and cook fun food. And and Tibbetts is really connected with um, the local farms, mm -hmm. local everything. Is yeah. that, that sounds like it's important to you. It is, you know, and it, it varies. I have people come in all the time and just want to drop off their fresh produce. Hey, we were just at Wild Hair. Can you take this? Hey, we were just at, you know, Sterlino's or, you mm -hmm. know, a Spooner or here's some pumpkins. You know, we got these, you know, I'm like, cool, you know. So I imagine, I mean, you're the chef, you have one employee, mm -hmm. and um, I'm amazed that you cook all that food for all those people, making them so happy, while at the same time monitoring your Facebook post, because mm -hmm. reservations come in on a messenger. Mm -hmm. They do. Is that right? They do, and it's, uh, it's busy, because uh, it's, it's, it's one guy doing it all. So I yeah. mean, from cooking, I stage myself. I know I'm busy in the dining room, so I'll go out there to every table and say hi. See the smiles, introduce myself, you know, and people are now calling me the mayor of Fern Hill, which is, <laughs> which is funny because I'm no mayor. I'm just a guy that wants to make sure everybody's meal that comes in there is as best as I can cook it. And the, the positive results I'm getting is just fantastic, and you know, I love rewarding. the smiles. So. That's great. Uh, but I can call in for reservations. Yeah, you can call in for reservations. I'm always checking my phone, you know, I mean, it's... It's there, it's a little high. My ex-mother-in-law can't reach it, so sometimes it just rings, but I do call those people back right away. Great, great, good to know. So I'm always interested in how a business started. You, you have a relatively small mm -hmm. place that you intend to stay, keep it that way, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you like that. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? Well, I started um, 19 years ago at Tacoma Golf and Country Club. I worked uh, there, and my chef there um, said, hey, go to Danny's Learn How to Flip Eggs go work other places to see what they do. Don't ever stay at one spot or you'll never reach your dream because, and he was right, because if you stay at one spot cooking too long, you're only gonna learn that way. Right. You know, and instead you can go work here, learn how to cut fish, go here, learn how to cut meat. So become the package deal. Mm -hmm. So six years ago I started um, doing cooking for needy families. Um, on your own? On my own, so mm -hmm. I put that on my Facebook so I'd go cook at people's house, I'd have people oh. reach out to me. So six times a year, I'd go do that, you know, and I'd spend my own money. Everybody always ask, hey, can I help? Can I help? I'm like, no, because I don't want to take from families or people with families. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Anyways, my name got out there. Tibbets, 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 you know, because I've worked everywhere. Growing up as a kid, you know, we used to go to the playgrounds and play, mm -hmm. and we used to meet all kinds of people. So right. growing up now, it's like I know so many people just from my childhood. Because you grew up in Fern Hill. Because I grew up in Fern Hill, yeah. at Mount Tahoma, you know, and I grew up in a lot of places. But... The cool thing is, is, once I put my name on that sign, mm -hmm. Tibbetts at Fern Hill, I got so many phone calls and just like, wow, is this Sean Tibbetts? Is this Sean Tibbetts? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I am so proud of you. you what know? made you decide to make the leap? Oh, well, I, I had to make a leap. Uh, my uh, Tony next door, um, he owns Little Jerry's, great man, uh, reached out to me. What's Little Jerry's? It's a restaurant right next door to mine. Oh, oh okay. He's like, Sean, I love what you do. You know, um, I, I could rent this out to somebody else, but I know you personally would be successful because I can see it. Oh, wow. You know, so I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I took that leap of faith. Um, so I was going to open in November. Um, I was working two jobs a lot, working for friends who are chefs. Saving um, your money. Saving my money, and uh, my mom passed. Oh, no. In December, so. Um, what year was this? Just last year. Just last year. So uh, I was devastated. I was, I was destroyed, and uh, a friend of mine uh, from... Fern Hill that I grew up with reached out to me and he's like, hey, how much, uh, how, how much would it cost to open your restaurant? And I gave him a number and, you know, it's, he just wrote me a check. And wrote you a check? Wrote me a check and it's like, dude, I, I believe in you, you know, and you're going to do great. And it's like, it was, it was hope, you know, it's like, 
I didn't, I, I don't deserve this, you know? Such it's an like, amazing story. Because I never went to culinary school, you know, I'm just a guy that's gonna open a restaurant, take a leap of faith, but here we go, and then I opened, and next thing you know, I mean, I, I opened with $32 on my bank account. Wow. I, I had no money, you know? And now it's just... People have been surrounding you. People have been surrounding support, me, you know? Making menus for you, building your websites. Yeah, it's wonderful. So it is. The, the community's just surrounded you, helped mm -hmm. you launch, because they, they knew what you could do. Yeah. It's an amazing story. Yeah, and I'm, a, amazing story. and I'm a giver, you know, it's like Thanksgiving or uh, right when I opened February, I, uh, uh, Mother's Day, I closed my restaurant. I fed, I fed a hundred people, you know, for free, Fabulous. you know, Father's Day, closed my restaurant, fed, fed a ton of people for free. You know, I build sack lunches for the community. We go out. I had a whole bunch of people on Labor Day mm -hmm. come in that I didn't even expect. And we're all building sack lunches. There are at least it's, 10 people in and there. And took them around to homeless I took them around to all the homeless that's people. Wonderful. And that's what we do. This you community know? is so fortunate to have you. And I'm looking so forward to coming and and trying out some of the amazing dishes you make. I'd love to talk with you longer, but sure. we're actually out of town. Sean, thanks so much for being on the show today. Hey, thank you, Mike, I appreciate it. Okay, up next on District Focus, the South Tacoma Business District. Connecting people to business is what Tacoma is all about. From banking to bikes, pizza to classic cars, the South Tacoma Business District features a rich history of shops, services, and industry that's iconic to the Tacoma landscape. Hi, I'm Brenda. I'm Karen. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the South, South Tacoma, Tacoma Business District. District. The South Tacoma Business District is a variety of small, independent businesses providing goods and services for the residential community around us. It was originally formed around the railroad in the late 1890s. And so that's basically how the whole community uh, got started. As cars became more available, then we became Auto Row. And so that's how we became South Tacoma, known for automobiles. In the district, we have our artwork, we have the bank, we have the horse, which is old 99. This is old Highway 99. Um, then we have the wheel, we have a bunch of artwork, the mural on the back side of um, Heritage Bank here on the corner. We do our jazz festival every year. We have the South Tacoma Auto Show every year, our car show, which is really a, a very large car show. The other events, the music festivals that we've had, the jazz festival and the reggae events, have been per, uh, put on by various business owners that have nightlife venues, and they've come up with these various ideas, and they've been fun events. Every summer, we put up 100 hanging flower baskets and the flower baskets are planted and nurtured by the students at Matahama High School. We have a 30 gallon water cart that they pull around and they were watered every day and they were huge. They were just beautiful. We have a variety of restaurants uh, from Mexican to American to Italian, uh, specialty restaurants. So we have a lot of destination businesses. People come here just for that. What I've heard from a lot of the business owners is that they would like to see more streetscape improvements, more beautification projects. So we're working towards that with our planning and design committee. There are many different things happening right now and we don't have a particular direction that we're aiming for. Um, economic viability obviously is something that we're striving for and we're working in um, tangent with the city to try and accomplish that as quickly as possible, but it is South Tacoma, so we'll see where we end up. For more information on Tacoma business, log on to experiencetacoma.com. Coming up on Tacoma Means Business, Andrew Fry offers up the need for small business marketing plans. To some, marketing may seem like a luxury that businesses can overlook. On this episode of Tacoma Meets Business, Andrew Fry offers up the need for small business marketing plans. The universal goal of any small business is to sell your product or services. And you do that by positioning it in front of your target audience and offering them something that will save them money, solve their problems, or basically it's just an offer that they can't refuse. Uh, given that this is the primary goal, the most important thing that you can do is take the time and put together a small business marketing plan. Now, you may not have one. In a lot of small businesses, that they take off and you think, word of mouth's gonna carry it, or I've told all my friends. But really, given that this is your universal goal, you should take the time to put one together. Now, you may already have one, 
but then you need to update it quarterly. And if you haven't done it, start, take the time now and put one together. Now that you're rolling up your sleeves and you're getting ready to roll out this small marketing plan, what you need to do is take out any and all market research that you may have done and review it. For the most part, quite possible you haven't done any and therefore it is time to do some market research and market research is everything from looking at who your competitors are to reviewing what your product does and what you say that it does one of the ways that you can also figure out what it is you need to do next is put together your focus group call up now obviously relatives are a great place to start friends are wonderful but if you can randomly select a number of people who've used your product or even your competitor's product and sit down and listen to them. What is it they want? What's the solution? Take that down. You're on the next step to getting your marketing plan done. Once you've gone through and said, okay, now I really understand what my unique proposition is. Maybe it's that you sell to a very small local market. Maybe it's that your product is handmade. Maybe it's that it does something special or different or cheaper or more expansive. Whatever it is that you've determined is unique, refine your target market. You start out thinking about who it is that you're selling to now that you've done the focus group, now that you've done the research, refine your target market. And then it's time to think about how is the best way in which you can get in front of them. Thanks, Andrew. For more information on Tacoma Means Business, log on to TacomaMeansBusiness.com. When Business Matters returns, mind and body are ingredients for a Proctor Gym business, making a difference in the spotlight. Today in the Spotlight, the focus is on fitness as we take you to a business that specializes in total body health and well-being. Hi, I'm Butch Trail. And I'm Jennifer Nario, and this is Tyso Fitness. Jennifer and Butch anchor Tyso in the heart of Tacoma's Proctor Business District. They offer a full range of fitness classes, including yoga, personalized fitness training, exhale two, three, and martial arts. Classes are small and personable with a focus on the client. I started Tyso Fitness because I wanted my clients to have the coaching and expertise my mother would have when she was younger. I watched her yo-yo diet, take fat loss pills, and other fitness fads with no long-term benefit. And I want my clients to have a better way. I think that fitness should be simple and easy, and small changes can make a lasting difference. And I want people to feel better now. The Tyso business model is all about providing a challenging and invigorating experience that supports the lifestyles of their clients. What's cool about us is that we understand that you are more complex than a one-size-fits-all solution. How you breathe, how you see, your balance, your strength, your mobility, a whole host of things go into how well you move. And we don't want our clients to put their health in danger just to go for a certain look. We want our clients to be healthy, we want them to be resilient, uh, and also enjoy the way they work, uh, the way you look, but your workout should not break you. Tyso Fitness works with you from head to toe, literally. Jennifer and Butch work with eye contact, stretching, balance, weight resistance, and other techniques designed to support the fitness goals of each customer. Our clients understand that the best parts of life are the experiences that we have with friends and family. And the more athletic and capable you are as an individual, then the more adventurous and exuberant those experiences can be. Every entrepreneur who commits to a small business has a story about the spark that got their company going. Jennifer's spark was a passion she has had for quite some time. Well, for me as an entrepreneur, I want to continue doing what I love, and that's helping people with movement. Going through our core values of playful movement, relaxation, and self-love, that's not easy. So I have to teach the public about how to protect their most valuable asset, which is their body, and have them make space for those things. And I want to do that myself as a human being and live the best life I can live. Um, I'd like you to do the 8K. Some say bringing work home can be trouble, but for Jennifer and Butch, owning their own business involves a healthy mix of home and work. I think boundary setting is a really big part of 
passion in business. I love what I do. I spend a lot of time thinking about the things that I do, but I also devote time and energy to focusing on myself so I can be the best person I can be, so I can continue to contribute to the world. The things we do here at work is the same things that we would be doing even if we didn't have the job. Butch and Jennifer are the sole employees of Tyso Fitness. Because this line of work requires providing focused attention on the needs and progress of each client, Rest. they maintain a strong commitment to excellent service and professional support. It's just me and Jennifer. Uh, what we do is very personal. We're looking for constant feedback from the client, so we are not at a point that we can train other people to kind of do what we're doing yet. For now, Jennifer and Butch plan to keep Tyso Fitness the size it is. And you guys are ready, take a break. They found their own balance, investing in the city of destiny, which brings them comfort in so many ways. Tacoma's home, like my grandparents went to Stadium High School, my mom like lived in Tacoma, my dad lived in Tacoma, so Tacoma is just where we call home. That's it for Business Matters. Join me next time for more insight into the Tacoma business scene. See you then.